Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we celebrate all the things we do while seated. I'm your host, E, here with my co-host, Chad Lutsky, and today we are finally getting started on the collab. We've done, the first episode was brainstorming, the second one was uh, outlining, and we're finally ready to start. Um, so I guess, what, you want to talk about anything before you jump into it? Do you want to start sharing your screen because i kind of we, we need to get that voice we need to get that voice down so i'm probably yeah. just gonna watch you start <clears throat> this and yeah. uh, see what you do to in order to share my screen i'm because i'm on my bat i do my audio video stuff on my mac and then i do all my writing on the here so i have to use this crappy keyboard so expect many errors as i <laughs> try to Error. try to type on this tiny little thing on my lap Dude, I don't even have that excuse. Hey, Sharath, good morning. Um, I don't even have that excuse because my my stuff, is, like I said, my first drafts are just word vomit. So I'll use the wrong there, there, there. I'll use the wrong it's. I'll use all that stuff and then I have to go back and change it. Oh, yeah. I use the wrong it's all the time. I don't know why. I, I know the difference. Yeah, we know it's, the rules. It's amazing how many times I get that apostrophe in there when it's not supposed to be. Good morning, Haley. Um, you know, it's it's funny because the I think most of my issues come from being on the phone all the time, and that's another reason why I use speech to text, even though it it still messes things up. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, yeah, so um, I'll I'll get in there, and I'm so used to it auto correcting to you know it apostrophe s uh -huh. uh, that I don't pay attention. So every time I just type its and just expect it to do it. Now Word will do that. But I got to the point with Word where it was changing random words to fit the context, mm -hmm. and I had to stop using it. And I, had to, hey, sorry, I don't know why I found that funny. Hey, hey, Haley, <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, morning, Vike. How you doing? All right. So Chad's gonna get started. I am going to be a little birdie watching him uh, do what he does so that we can get the voice down. Um, basically he's going to figure out what he's doing and I'm going to mimic that with that same voice. So that should be an interesting, uh, experiment for you guys to watch. Also watch how I absorb and copy and all that stuff. So, yeah. And I, I do want to preface that <clears throat> I don't have, I, I wanted to establish at least the first couple sentences last night. I don't, I have nothing. So I am really just starting, uh, the opening line for those who haven't ever written before or watched the process <clears throat> this opening paragraph doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stay it might yeah. might fall in love with it might hate it it's just the way it goes so i, I got a i got a quick story uh, i worked with an editor one time i worked with her for years um but her her thing was and she would do this with everybody it did not matter who the fuck you were and that's one of the reasons now why i have such an economy of words she would literally cut the first paragraph of anything I wrote and start the next one. She didn't care what it said. She would literally cut it. Mm. And uh, she's like, you don't even notice it's gone. Um, and of course, me being the writer, I'd be like, I do notice it's gone. There's a reason it's there. But it almost, I do not suggest anybody do this. Yeah. Um, it is a good way to teach you what is necessary and what is not. But yeah, um, it, yeah the, more I, the more she did it, is we worked on like 12 different projects together. The more she did it, the more I, I caught on to what she wanted to the point where my opening paragraphs usually became just one line. And it was, you know, get right into the action and move the fuck on. Um, and she said she learned it from uh, Kurt Vonnegut, not like personally, but mm -hmm. something that he had said, um, get right into the action and then ex expand later. So anyways, I have a, <clears throat> I have a friend who preaches, uh, that uh, never use the first paragraph that you've written. You're probably going to write it. You need to write it at least, I don't know what he says, like six, seven, eight times. And I just, I can see that under some cir circumstances, but usually when I'm writing something, I'm, it's, I'm starting it because I'm in the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, oftentimes that first page is, uh, not every time, but oftentimes it's, I, I love going back to it because it impresses me because I was, you know, you can you can kind of sway from the moment as you as you especially if you have some time in between doing this project, you kind of lose your voice a little bit. But oftentimes at the beginning, it's like I have it and I'm specifically trying to use a, a hook in the in, the, you know, in the first sentence that 
that ask a question, okay, I need to know more what's going on. Even it's some, it's something simple. So I don't really subscribe to the whole, but I do know what you're saying. And sometimes that can, I read books all the time. That's like, especially if it's a book that's like, it was a warm, sunny day. The leaves did. I'm like, dude, I don't <laughs> care. I'll come up with my own thing. Just let's get to the story. Elmer, Elmer, Elmore Leonard would have burned a book like that. He's like, never start with the weather. Never start with a, uh, never i think it, another one was never start with dialogue or maybe it's the exact opposite never start with narration anyways but you're also uh, not supposed to uh uh start with waking up on foster homes and flies <laughs> and stirring the sheets both were the protagonists waking up in the morning dude i i can't i can't I, I can't even count i don't have enough fingers and toes to how many stories i've opened with they woke up or whoever yeah. woke up so yeah i i completely agree but i mean it's it's like natural at, from a storytelling perspective you want to start somewhere in the most natural places let's go ahead and start the day you know or let's go ahead and start the the craziness like you know i yeah. wake up in a strange place or you know i wake up to sun coming through the blinds you're setting the scene it's just really easy to fall back on stuff like that when it's just as easy to to start the scene with something else that might be a little more action oriented, like brushing teeth. And then you can give, you know, if they're OCD or not, you can give hints there, that kind of thing. Whereas the giving the weather or the, uh, the description of the room you're in, especially when you first wake up, you're not paying attention to what's around you. Yeah. So, you know, that's anyways, but, but yeah, I, I, I try not to do weather or a anything like that. All right. Oh, <laughs> we are on forever. All right. Um, I think I need to get to a different screen here. I always I put the word count down there because I always do that. Oh, that's fine. I don't know if you can if this is showing up or not, but oh, I can pull it up on on my side. Yeah, you're. I can watch you live over on Google Docs. If I do have a problem reading it, because I'm sitting here going, what's that say? <laughs> Squ squinting my ass up. I'm squinting Tarantino. All right. This is nerve wracking. I'm sorry. No, that's no problem. <laughs> what, Chad? You don't like being watched? So voyeuristic. Yeah, dude, pound that keyboard. <laughs> All right, I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to shut up. I, I promise. <laughs> Boobs. Okay. <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> now we got to now we got to have a character named Boobs. We we got to have a character named Boobs. That's that's it. You did, you just you did this. Not me. Okay. You did it. There's a character named Boobs. I don't know where he comes in, but there's a character named Boobs. I'm down. Yeah. Everyone loves Boobs. <laughs> Loves <clears throat> exactly and that's how he could introduce himself yeah I'm, he's just I'm, a lovable everybody loves boobs yeah I, I, my name's boobs why do they call you boobs because everybody loves boobs <laughs> this is how the process goes guys this is literally how the process goes you, you get something you see something and it it just works it, it just jokingly typing out boobs and we have a whole we have a whole character out of it now because everybody loves boobs that's fantastic so good oops so good oh what happened to my here we go oh where did i do oh, here it is okay <laughs> Oh, and by the way, if you need to mute me at any point in time, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely do that. Okay. You're not going to hurt my, my feelings. Good morning, hey, Tim. Hey, you're making leak in 10? Oh, there it is. I got a lag on my end. Tim just popped up for me. Leak in potato soup sounds amazing, Haley. And yes, good morning, Tim. How are you doing, my friend? You're st you're still back in 
Alabama, right? Or am I misremembering? Y'all, he muted me. I'm crying. <laughs> I, I, I am gonna I am gonna mute you. Yeah, I know. So I know. that you can you can and there's just no sense. You go ahead and talk, you know, to, yeah. to everybody and stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> Is Chad just laggy for me? Not like we can do anything about it, but is Chad uh, is Chad just laggy for me, or is he laggy for everybody? We we do need to try and meet up, Tim. We need to, man. I mean, I don't care if it's just for like fucking coffee for like fifteen minutes when you're near me. Just give me a holler. If you're a member of the Discord, just shoot me a DM. Ooh. It's your favorite soup. It's a good fucking soup, man. There's a brand at Aldi's that I buy. Oh, it's so good. Molar. I love staying on themes. He is, he is, this is, this is interesting. I want you guys to pay attention. He keeps writing in past tense and has to go back to, and has to go back to present. He did it with the first line too. Oh, never mind. He tricked me. He tricked me. That's supposed, used is right, is correct there. It's not supposed to be used as. Before she sold it. There's so much, so much character development just in that opening line. The gravel in my hand feels like teeth, broken from a kick to the face. I choose a good sized molar and pitch it toward the metal can Aunt Whoever used to keep her jewelry in before she sold it. Tink. I find comfort in the sound, whether it be the satisfaction of hitting my target. Because it helps make the sound, the sound behind me. Helps mask the sound behind me. Okay. Put the fucking thing right here on the TV and now it's gone. I'm going to love writing this with Chad if for no other reason than he's amazing with dialogue. The first thing I thought when we got to the uncle was Uncle Cletus, but I think that's a little too fucking cliche for even for me. Once again, if you notice, he's giving character development and character description without giving character development and character description. Um, so, Uncle, whatever, he's looking for his lighter. So, we know he smokes. What does he smoke? 
Uh, next thing would be uh, there must be a dozen of those things lying around. The house is either obviously cluttered or or whatever. Uh, it's yeah, it's absolutely absolutely great. Stuffed in the couch cushions, kicked under the chair. He's he's nearly melted into. Oh my god, Chad, this is great shit. I mean, right there, he just tells you about you know Uncle's posture. It just tells you so much. Or even in his own back pocket. He's also forgetful. Is that because of drugs? Is that because of what? And Chad's probably not thinking of any of this stuff. Like, he's not considering it. But he's he's so good at setting scenes to begin with. He knows exactly what he's doing without focusing on what he's doing. See, now now he's now you see he's overthinking now he's, he's gonna kill me when when he actually rewatch if he rewatches his back now he's overthinking when or even his own back pocket was descriptive enough and he now he's adding more to it pecker was if he didn't need it see um what i'd likely do here is i would do or even his own back pocket period um He'd forget his own pecker was, he'd forget where his pecker was if he didn't need it. That's what I would change. I'm just literally trying to give commentary for, you know, what, what we're doing. Uh, I'm definitely not going to go back and edit it now. Never want to disturb the, uh, the momentum. I have none of your bullshit. Not today, Cletus. I have none of your bullshit. <clears throat> Is it the aunt who says that? It's a show, don't tell. Yeah. Yeah, Tink. I was so I was hoping I was hoping he'd do that. As he gets gonna keep coming back to that as a as a re revolving theme. Um, if he, if he doesn't do this naturally, which he's already doing it, um, that's the kind of thing that you would go back and add to denote that the good sound that the kid likes is coming through the bad sounds. It's like every time it starts getting loud, that kind of thing, you know, think, and once again, that's showing what's happening. See, right here, I would do the screen door screeched open or something like that. And he might go back and do this. Yep. 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 He's doing it. He's he's doing it. Man, this is this is awesome. You scream. Yes. Yes. Like a dying crow. Fuck yeah. Nice. Man, this is cool as shit. I've never had a chance to watch, you know, we've done writing streams together before, but I've never had a chance to just sit down and watch him write. Because I don't rewatch my lives. <clears throat> and where he's putting the things in parentheses, I just write Panda Fucker. Uh, that lets me know I need to go back and change names. But then again, he doesn't know anybody's name right now. 
So I wouldn't even do Panda Fucker. I would force myself to come up with something right there and then have to change it because we literally don't know any of these people's names except for people later on. We know Mingo is Mingo M I N G O is going to be the uh, the the guy in charge of everything at the carnival, and then Sheena or Shenna S H E N N A is going to be the girl that the MC meets. Aunt says to get dinner. She wants bread and peanut butter. And if you manage strawberry jam, get that too. And if you can manage strawberry strawberry jam, get that too. I might change like jam to jelly. Because I don't think these people would say jam. I could be wrong though. I hate those metal chairs with a passion. I was about to say the one, the the one stained, uh, the time someone shit in it. But wow, I wish I would have said that before he started writing it. It's it's amazing how how on, on how synced up we already are. He dropped a lit cigarette in his lap. Just before passing out. Eighteen beers, man. That's that's a lot. During my alcoholic days, man, me and my friend Pat would go down and get uh suitcases of beer, a suitcase of beer each every single night. If you don't know, a suitcase of beer has twenty four cans. And uh we would we'd go down to the local gas station where they had the walk in cooler um for the cold beer. And we would grab one each, and we would kill that every single night. Every night. Did not matter. hop over to this other side just i can't read this bottom section pregnant girlfriend sits on the metal chair the one uncle shit his pants in two weeks ago after drinking 18 beers he dropped a lit cigarette in his lap just before passing out he woke the whole house with the squeal that came after the next morning i saw the shit dried like a scab bro <laughs> oh perfect oh that's nasty Oh, that's amazing. You, they made it. Ooh. Scattering the green paint. Now that bed spot, that bear spot is a reminder. Uh. I'm gonna go read some other details about the characters real quick. Okay. You turned me on. You 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 got to go back and watch like my commentary from uh, <laughs> from the, like the whole time you were writing basically. 
But uh, the, the one thing that I'll point out before is when you said the way you wrote the screen door part at yeah. first, I said, no, I would probably go back and I would say the screen door screech is open. And you went back right when I said that you went back and deleted what you had. Like I hear the screen door. I can't remember what you had, but you basically turned around and did what I was saying I would do right at that. Oh, point. really? Yeah, it's 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 creepy. And I was uh, I was also telling everybody how you were giving character development without giving it because like right up here, the uh, um, the where she used to keep her jewelry before she sold it like that right off the bat tells tells everybody that this family's broke. Yeah. Um, and then you get into the more detail down here about the uncle, um, the. Uh, oh, yeah, his his uh like his memory, you, you, you're talking about the finding the lighter. So we know that the house is either cluttered or, or whatever. But mm -hmm. on top of that, you, you also deal with the, uh, the, the uncle's memory and anger issues. Uh, and I said the only thing that I would change about that section would be, uh, or even in his own back pocket, period, he'd forget where his pecker was if he didn't need it. So I, that that would be the only thing I changed. I I liked the the C red, but that was the only comment I had about that. And the rest of it's just yeah, it's good. I like. I, I that's funny that you said that because I don't like the forget where his pecker was if he didn't need it. You don't like it? That, well, the funny part. Okay, when you go back, if you go back and watch, I I, I originally said before I saw what you were adding, because you kind of got stuck uh, stuck on because like you're trying to add to it, and I said it's it's fine the way it is. I would stop it right after um, or even in his own back pocket, full stop. But I also do like I, I do like that line just because I don't know, it, it, it just reads. But I, I would definitely get uh, rid of the because his eyes see red so often, just, you know, period after pocket. And then he'd forget where his pecker was if he didn't need it. But anyways, yeah. that, that was that was really cool to do the commentary for because <laughs> the uh, it. It was, it was interesting to see you either employ stuff that I would do or for me to literally predict what you were about to do. That's that's very cool. Anyhow. Yeah, that is way ner more nerve wracking than I thought it would be. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't 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 do oh, that. No, 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 that's fine. <laughs> I uh, I've done writing live streams, but I've never people can't see what I'm writing. Right. I got you know, you. so I'm not self-conscious. I, I get real. Um. I don't know. I guess I guess I get I guess I get self-conscious about it. I mean, it's no big deal. Yeah. The fact that you still do it is important. You know, the fact that you can push through that, even if you are nervous. I mean, you did a fantastic fucking job. You did, you know, you all the all the subtle character detail um, with, you know, like like Haley says over here, it's a show. Don't tell fantastic writing. And uh, yeah, see that I, I can't do that um, on a on a rough draft. It's usually just blah. Here's all my ideas, and then we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I didn't finish reading this last bit. Um, later that night, I approach. Oh no, I'm way down here. Never mind. I'm, I was reading the notes. Sits on the middle chair. The one uncle shoots. The the, the whole uh, <laughs> dried like a scab is great. Uh, they made me clean it up with the hose, scattering the green paint. Now the bare spot is just a reminder that Uncle can, can't hold his own, uh, not without leaving a trace of himself behind. That's that's, that's good. That's good shit. Uh, no pun intended. <clears throat> um, yeah, for this kind of thing, where yeah, I'm trying to give as much information as I can without it feeling like I'm giving information. So you were doing um, it intentionally. Um, I thought maybe it was just a subconscious thing that you, you, you know, you've been doing this for so long that it just happens. So you were intentionally doing it. That's cool. That's cool to know. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to, essentially I'm trying to paint a picture, Yeah, you know, of, of, you know, to where each sentence matters and tells something like, like you said with the, with the jewelry. Okay. Um, why what you know why would she sell her jewelry hard, hard up apparently and we find out hard up because you know they're spending their money on drugs and whatnot um i think i wrote it in the one of the as one of the chapters where the kid goes to um you know they they usually they want him to shoplift he's not down with that so mm -hmm. they usually 
I like the idea of, you know, but the cousin, for whatever reason, um, because I, I was thinking, if we have this nine-year-old cousin and the 16-year-old takes off, and they, if they're kind of like, he leaves them behind, you know, in, in, in a lot of stories, he would do what he could to get this other kid out of there. Mm-hmm. But I thought it'd be better if the kid the kid likes it. So when he does shoplift and comes home and brings stuff, he's praised for it. It makes him feel really good that he did something for his family and his yeah. family is kind of recognized. You know, it's pathetic. Yeah, it is, but it makes sense. Psych- psych- psychologically, it makes sense that he yeah. would want the reward because he doesn't get rewards. You know, there is no happy times in this house. So, yeah. And I just view the kid as being like maybe the, the, the woman in the relationship that she knows isn't good for her, but she doesn't want to leave. Mm-hmm. And um, so on some strange, you know, this kid being being as young as he is, has um, like an unconditional love for his family, doesn't maybe realize just how bad it is because he doesn't know uh, what life could be like, uh, what life is for other people outside of that. Yeah, This is all he knows. So I thought maybe we should present that too, where like the, the reason why our protagonist isn't rescuing this poor nine-year-old kid is because the nine-year-old kid doesn't think he needs to be rescued. He doesn't want to leave. Yeah. Um, but he's also not involved with all the, with the exception of, yeah, I will go steal this stuff where this kid was like, you know, our protagonist, he's not down with the stealing, doesn't want to get caught. Doesn't think it's cool, but he'll go dumpster diving, you know, which is something that that's, regularly done you know yeah, I, I love i love that idea as i was reading over your notes uh that you sent me um i i love the i love the first three chapters so the the way the way you outlined them and i'm completely down down with that um i really like the idea of the mc going and dumpster diving to get out of having to steal and then the nine-year-old them not being happy with that so the nine-year-old just goes i'll take care of it you know just so he can get that uh what serotonin or dopamine or whatever from actually getting praised because he's never praised for anything else i, I yeah. love that that's that's great yeah <clears throat> i think i put that in like a later chapter but uh i'm you know touching on it now and and this could i mean there could be a thousand words between the last two paragraphs uh oh yeah just to spread out these are these are almost kind of just like ideas you know and then mm-hmm. you know pair you write a paragraph and you're like you know what this 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 needs to go up 14 paragraphs up you know this this section right, right here constantly moving things around i do that all the time yeah also daily uh, stealing is an adre- is an adrenaline rush too so um yeah maybe it could be like the kids almost just, kind of way of being getting high just like everybody else yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'm really digging this. Tink. Um, let me look at our notes quick. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta start coming up with some names. Yeah, the, I was I was thinking about that. I don't know. I I don't want to use this, but the very first thing, and probably just because of the cliche and the stereotype of the this family, um, right off the bat, for some odd reason, I had Uncle Cletus. And I was like, that's way too, the, yeah. that's too on the nose for this. But that's Probably. the only name that popped into my head while you were writing. Um, and I was like, and I don't, I don't know. Uh, whilst you guys are cooking, I'm souping. <laughs> Let them cook. Let them cook. For some reason, my wife said you should name your, because I told her this morning about what we were doing. I told her the, the premise. Mm-hmm. And um, she said, you should name your kid Shane. And, uh. I said, why is that? And she just told me that she knew a kid named Shane that came from like lower class family and that their house was kind of like that. But also, also, we can use Derek, uh, Alaska Jones over on Discord. He's Derek Jones here. But uh, um, we could use Derek's name also. I told him that I'd put him in a story. It doesn't have to be this one. I'm just saying that I told him that I put him in a story because he was like, you know, so e- either either one, the, the cousin could be Derek or the MC could be Derek. Uh, I like Shane, too. Um, I'm not sure which one I want for which, but uh, I, I like I like Shane. Shane can work. In fact, maybe the. I don't know. 
I, I, I think the little, I think the young, <clears throat> the young kid should have a. Like who the, the kind of name that's like why would you name your kid that? Oh, that's a good one. Almost like a either either a novelty or named after somebody that, you know, like Elvis or it's just something like why would that's just cruel? Why would you do that's a stupid name? That's a good one. Just another testament to like man, these are horrible parents. How how about Duke and then Dad is a John Wayne fan, something like that. Yeah, except Duke kind of feels like, just like rednecky. Okay, all right. Uh, than, also, this, uh, I, I like Travis for someone. I don't know, but I do like. I haven't. I haven't used Travis or Shane ever. I've but used Uncle, the Derek, but not Uncle. Tra uh, Uncle Travis. Sounds good to me, man. Do we want that to be our main uncle? Yeah, definitely the main uncle. Okay, so Travis. And then when uh. Whoever's hollering at him, I'm guessing that's either. That's the aunt and uncle talking. Yeah, it's got, it's got to be the aunt. Yeah, so, uh, um, but I would say she'd call him Trav. Okay. Yeah. I, I would think, and then yep. when she's mad, she can like call him Travis, and that's gonna be mm -hmm. something subtle we we add in there. And right now, she's like, "I ain't studying you," kind of kind of shit. Mm -hmm. But when she's really mad, Travis, travesty. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think of something else. We could give the boy a girl's name. That's funny you said that because I was li I was literally just sitting here to say I, I mean it's not a girl's name but it's associated with something on that side which was Butch you know Butch Cassidy that that kind of thing. Um, but uh, let's see here. Um, what? <laughs> Fuck it. I mean, do you you want to reference Cash? Like, just call him Sue. Yeah, yeah, that was my first thought. Um, yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Sue or Cassidy, and they call like him Ca Cassie all the time, and he hates it. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. I like Cassidy. I like Cassidy. Yes. <clears throat> let's do Cassidy, um, and then yeah, call him Cassie. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Yeah, there's a Western con Shane, yeah. But yeah, he uh, Shane was more of like a the hero in trying to break the hero in white stereotype. I don't think he was much an anti hero. I can't remember like the I just remember how he rides off at the end and it's kinda open ended, but you know he's dead. Um I really love the the very last shot of that movie. It's one of my favorites in like cinematic history. And the book's great too. So are we gonna go with Shane for uh, for our MC? Okay. I mean, I'm f I'm fine with that. I, I don't I don't mind that at all. Okay. At least as a placeholder for right now, if we're not entirely if you're not entirely happy with. It. Yeah, that's fine with me. It seems like a like a well-rounded, simple name, and not too common. Um. So we got uncle, uncle number two, and then his tw 24 year old son, and then his son's girlfriend. I, and then he, I had an then, idea for a name for the, for the pregnant girlfriend, which is Bethany, just so at some point in time, someone could call her Methany. I know it's going to be Coke, but yeah. uh, Methany is more of a new thing, but Bethany is the first name I thought of. And then I thought it would be funny to do Methany. Um, but uh, it, it is Coke and it is the set, the, 70s 80s 80s late 80s late yeah 80s. like 89 90 yeah. that was the year i got attacked by a big old doggy yeah methany yeah it's something we say around here kind of like uh calling angry white women uh karens uh you see uh, some chick who's tweaking and it's methany Um, okay, I guess we should, uh, everybody, 
um, <clears throat> everybody's last name. They could all have the same last name. Right. Um, I don't know why. First thing that popped in my head was Charles. Um, as far as like last name, Shane Charles, Travis Charles. It okay. is like I, that. That's the first thing that popped into my head, and I tend to go with whatever pops up first. Okay. All right. So um, we need an aunt name. Could be uh, something quick like Aunt Jen. The only thing that popped into my head was Marjorie. Um, that's the only thing that I got. Uh, Jen or Jan, either one of those is fantastic. I like that. All right, well, let's go with Aunt Jen. Jan sounds weird. Okay. Aunt Jan. That's fun. I, I have an Aunt Janet, and we call her Aunt Jan. <laughs> well, not anymore. I mean, I haven't seen her since I was like 15. I haven't even thought about her, but. Yeah. Rita can be another one. Definitely a Rita. Uh, we can call the... Let's do Aunt Rita. I like that name. Yeah. Um, and then we can call the other one, the pregnant girlfriend, Jen, if you wanted to. We'll, we'll get this cast together here in a second. That's for sure. We can just stick with... Bethany? Okay, you, yeah. you decided to use Bethany? That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so we need uncle number two and then his son. All right. Um, man, the only thing I'm coming up with is like the most basic ass shit, like Doug. Um, what about DeWitt? DeWitt. DeWitt. Do it. Yeah. D E W I T T. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. They could call him. They could call him Dewey. Uh, like we we should have like one person in the family, like the 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 nine year old, calls everyone by their full name. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then what about Khan, the 24 year old son, uh, Dwight? Like you got Dwight and Dwight. <laughs> I don't know if that's too corny for you, dude, but it's not too corny. I just, I worry because we have so many people that, Oh yeah, you're right. No, you're, you're right. That'd be way too fucking confusing. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, I just had the stupidest. It's it's because of the books I have behind me. But I was like, let's call him Laird. Hunter. Hunter feels like something they might name their kid. I, I like I like Hunter. L literally, this is this is the reason. Is I got Laird Hunt books sitting here, and I said Laird at front. I was, at first, I was like, that, no, that's just fucking stupid. That's rich rich people name. Um, and then Hunter popped in and I was like, that'll work. But anyways, uh, and any of this stuff can change at any time. So at Hunter, uh, all right. So we got Shane, Rita, Travis, Dewitt, Dewey, Hunter, Bethany, Cassidy, calls him Cassie. Yeah. The name bank is growing. I love it. I can't wait to get right to, to get to boobs. <laughs> Find out who that guy is. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be great. Uh, boobs. Everybody loves boobs. Oh, that is such a good. I, I love. That's the magic, man. That's that's the magic I'm here for. When it's simple shit like that. Okay, chapter one. Pro tag chucking rocks into old coffee can while sitting on the rickety front porch. His family fight the house behind him. Demonstrate the unhealthy dynamics of the house. Hangs out with nine year old cousin. Gets him out of the house. Chapter ends with Uncle Juan bringing him up. Okay, so I think I think what we'll do is um, to try to stick with that. Maybe go up, uh, like save the scene where the where the, uh, uh, Bethany comes out, and have the boy come out instead. The the um, what's his name, Cassidy, mm -hmm. and sit next to him. You know, and they talk, and then maybe they, um, uh, yeah, they just kind of hang out and talk and get to know. Yeah, them what, a what bit. I would do in this situation, if you wanted to have Cassidy come out, I mean, like have him come out and sit down and just like start chucking gravel with him, and then they could have like this simple conversation that starts like, uh, "There ain't no food in the house, so 
expect them to ask one of us to go out uh, some some shit i don't know something like that mm -hmm. um something that you know just normal ass uh conversation that is, isn't really focused because they're both chucking rocks i did the same thing in bay's end so i don't know if you want to like repeat that kind of thing but when uh trey and eddie are walking down the street kicking the rock it's almost like they're taking turns uh talking one will kick the rock the other one will kick the rock and um it is almost like a bonding thing for these two boys to sit out there and chuck gravel in the and one yeah. of them does it one of the shane does it to for the good sound and cassidy does it just because of the camaraderie you know that kind of yeah. thing is what he's playing along impl implied exactly so especially for a nine-year-old okay And I, I don't know if you want to foreshadow talking about there's no food in the house or not, but um, that would be the only thing that I, where I would go with that, um, just to get the conversation kickstarted. Um, maybe I was thinking like having some kind of like dialogue where it's spoken, but the reader isn't exactly sure what they're talking about just yet. Yeah, I like. Um, uh, yeah, yes. And then you find out. Oh, he's gonna go. He's, this is this is what they do. He's gonna go steal some food, and this, you know, maybe have uh, Shane say something like, um, "You know, you don't have to do that." Yeah. And I can testify that you can most definitely live off dumpsters. Oh, I, oh, I know. I have done it. <laughs> we uh, when uh, we were in pretty well. First off, I was homeless twice. I've been homeless twice in my life oh, uh, and yeah. um, my favorite was Whole Foods dumpsters um, because they would just they would throw out the best shit like salads, uh, all different kinds of stuff that were prepackaged um, and they, they don't open them up and, and discard them that way. They they just throw them out their hole. Mm -hmm. um, so Whole Foods, uh, Costco and Sam's Club, those dumpsters were fucking gold. Um, that's where I got all of my food from. Um, and I didn't have to worry about anything being dirty because all that stuff was packaged. So, um, yeah, we didn't have those. Um, I didn't know any better. Looking back, I, there's a couple of grocery stores that probably could have went, but I never knew that that food was thrown out at grocery stores. I didn't know that until I was way older. So I always hit um, the Little Caesars. And this <laughs> is back when uh, they had Pizza Pizza, where I don't think yeah. they still have that, where you have to get two pizzas. The right. other one's free, and but they, they, they won't give you just one pizza, even yeah. if you try. And I remember. Came. I remember those days, and and the pizza was square. So I remember pizza, pizza. That was their whole thing. These were, little, well, they they came in like rectangles that were just mm -hmm. like. Oh well, yeah, rectangles, bags. not squares, but yes, rectangles. And uh, yeah, so either <laughs> um, I, I I watched a movie in the eighties called Streetwise about homeless kids, and I learned a trick from there. If you want to get a pizza that you want, then you order it and you don't go pick it up. Right. They'll throw it out. And then you get your pizza, um, like if you want the toppings. I I, I don't remember do if I ever shift, did that. You have to do it at shift change, though. That's the only caveat yeah. because because they're they're going to be taking the trash closer out to closing change. time, right? That or that or that. And then yeah, you can get whatever you want because it's just going to go in the trash. And usually they don't bother pouring it out; they just throw the box and everything in the dumpster. So, but at, you know, pizza, just like most people, uh, like my favorite food that Mexican and. I'll tell you what, I never thought that I could get tired of pizza, but my fridge, I lived in a little, at this particular time, I have been homeless twice, but this particular time I had an efficiency apartment and um, I lived right around the corner from a pizza place. I was so broke and all I had was like, uh, I had been eating a lot of peanut butter toast because I was getting like um, from like the charitable place or whatever, they'd give you like a big thing of the black and white generic peanut butter. Mm -hmm. You had to add sprinkles of sugar because yeah. it just didn't taste like peanut butter. Yeah, they and then unro just unroasted nuts and everything. It was just basic ass peanuts blended yeah. into peanut butter. Yeah, and then loaves of bread. And uh, uh, I didn't have a toaster, so I would just I would throw like twelve pieces of bread in the in my uh, oven, and then cook them up. And dude, I'm serious. I'd, I'd make a stack, you know, like fourteen inches tall of just uh, peanut butter toast, scarf that. But when I got tired of that, yeah, I did the pizza thing. Filled my fridge with pizza, um, different, you know, different cut with pineapple on it, with with supreme, just pepperoni, whatever, mm -hmm. and 
I got so tired of eating that pizza just for breakfast and lunch and dinner. So I started going to, I hit Taco Bell and McDonald's or uh, Burger King. That's next to impossible to try to try to try to find something that isn't just nasty slop right. uh, squished down in there. You're absolutely correct because they throw everything in a waste bucket and it all gets mixed up and it might be wrapped, but they usually come come up come apart or it's a fuck up on the line so they haven't even wrapped the sandwich yet and they just throw it into the waste bucket yeah and then the manager has to go through all that stuff but yeah you're absolutely right now uh i do remember uh this wasn't you know dumpster diving but uh one of the things that i would do this is how long ago i was homeless the uh i think 39 cent taco sundays uh at taco bell i would get um i would you know panhandle for the entire week and then I would go there on Sunday and get as many tacos as I could afford. And then I would eat those over the next couple. And I wouldn't get any lettuce or uh, cheese on it. It was just the meat and the, the thing because the lettuce would go bad. And so would the cheese. But that meat lasts fucking forever. Um, Strangely. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, and I would eat off that. I'm pretty sure I gave myself food poisoning because I would literally eat off that unrefrigerated Taco Bell for like five to six days until I finally ran out. But yeah, anyways, um, mm, Cheerios, what the, oh, hang on. One of my housemates got free food from her church. She would never eat the Cheerios. So we had about 30 boxes. Oddly enough, uh, when I, I went to food pantries around here, food pantries around here will give you like a case of fucking lemons. Like it's, it's just stuff that the, that the grocery stores don't want. So they donate it. Um, they donate a certain amount to the food pantries around here. So you, you're never guaranteed anything nutritional, um, you just, you get what you get. Um, and we've gotten uh, entire crates of cantaloupe that were nearly rotted. We've gotten, uh, expired milk, uh, not even shelf stable milk, just milk that had already expired. Well, it's a best by date nowadays, so they can legally do that. Um, that's why they stopped doing expiration dates because, uh, if you, if they sell something after expiration date, they can be held responsible with a best by date they can't be held responsible that's why they shifted um anyways um so i'm i'm also with with this i there was i once again there was a point i was trying to make with this and now i can't remember what the fuck it was um Oh yeah, the the food pantry. So, uh, but the most like the craziest thing we ever got was uh, an entire case of lemons. I'm talking like 300 lemons, and we had no idea what to do with it. We didn't have any flour or anything like that to like make like lemon bread or whatever. Um, and it, it just like what what the hell? This is an insult. Like, what am I gonna do with a case of lemons and a jug of expired milk or or a case of rotting cantaloupe? Um, and wh while you know, you, you feel bad for not being appreciative at the same time. Again, what the hell is as someone who's already struggling going to do with a case of lemons? Honestly, like when you just make yourself a bunch of lemonade. <laughs> like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, that gives you lemons, dude. Haven't you learned that a long time yeah, ago? Right. That's a fuckload of lemonade, though. <laughs> uh, I'm so tired of the taste of peanut butter. Here, have a lemon. Anyways. Um, yes. I, I'm going to go ahead and take a break because I've already been in the chair for over an hour. Me and Chad talk about 15 minutes before this. Um, and if you want to continue writing or just talk to Chad or, or whatever, I'll hit, I'll hit you guys back when I get, when I get back. All right. Uh, mute my Hang on. Was there anything you wanted to talk about before? Hang on. No. Okay. All right. Just making sure. just realized I don't need to type on that. I don't think. Yeah, maybe I do.
Thank you, lazy. I did. All right. I got to write something. Something just popped into my head. I got to get this down before I forget it. Do it. Oh, sorry. I can't even hear you. All right. Excuse me. Jeez.
I uh, I also do this thing. You, you, I'm sure you probably do it too. Where if something pops into my head, it's not going to be used for. It could be fifteen thousand words later. I don't know. I, I will have a section called "Use Later" or something, and then yeah. put those at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, just, I do. I do the same thing. I just did one um, okay. where where uh, Shane sticks up for. It, it comes out the Cassie thing. Like that he doesn't like it, it comes out and it's just a quick gotcha. Yep. It's funny you bring up the bread and peanut butter because what I'm writing over here, I guess I can just throw this in also for the use later just so you can read it. Um let's put it right here. Is it not is it really not gonna let me do this? Oh, you can't use. Oh, Lord, I don't know if this is gonna mess you up, but it. No, you're fine. That took that, the formatting. Uh, no, that's. Uh, I'm not worried about that. Okay. The sinks a science experiment. Moon landing as an entomologist's wet dream. Plates fuzzy with mold scattered in both basins. A spoon stands on end in one corner. A cockroach stuck in the peanut butter coating the utensil dangles from the side like a mountain climber writhing languidly. Dead flies float in a faded and scratched Cool Whip container, their bodies drifting across gray water that smells vaguely of Hidden Valley. Someone smashed a moth on the rim of the sink, is what I've got so far. Nice. So, <clears throat> I was oh. thinking maybe open up chapter two with that or something. I don't, I don't know, but we'll use it somewhere. I really, I, I, let me read what you've got since I... Um, if you go to... Uh... The screen door screams. I, I took uh, Bethany out and put Cassidy in instead. Okay. <laughs> I like that imagery. The ears being too big. Oh, I didn't get all the way over. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, waiting to see if Travis comes out and yeah, uh, yeah, I like that. Pink. Probably yeah. be more of a ting or a ping than a tink, right? With if it's like a coffee can, it'd definitely be a tink, like a tink. It would definitely be something like that. If it was like a like a tin can, would be more like a plink. Okay. Um, it's just a much thinner, uh, aluminum or tin or whatever the fuck they use. Um, but I mean, plink works fine too. I mean, either one of them, but I, I do like tink. Uh, let's see here. Pregnant girlfriend. Uh, she wants bread and peanut butter. If you can manage strawberry jam, get that too. And I was thinking, uh, pregnant girlfriend can be on, uh, Bethany can be on wick. So they can get the they they could technically get the peanut butter for free, and then he could shoplift the strawberry jam to go with it. So uh, I, I, I don't remember know if they had. I can't remember when they started Wick. I thought it was. It might have been actually. It might have been no. Tanif came later. I'm looking it up. I remember. I remember 25. being on a on a what was called GA where <clears throat> government assistance. Yeah. And um, which is which is insane to think that a very healthy 16, 17 year old kid. The first time I got on it, I was on I was 17 that a, uh, a healthy 17 year old guy with no kid, just too lazy to work, can get food stamps and have my rent paid. Wow. That did not help me. Nah. I mean, it helped me to continue 
all my bad habits and just right. be lazy, but it didn't help me get a job. Uh, yeah. I was like, wait a minute, I can eat for free and have my rent paid and just skateboard and play in bands all day and don't have to. Sounds, heck yeah. Sounds awesome. But life yes. is good. Yeah. And takes away from the people who actually need it. Uh, let's yeah. see here. So, yeah, October 7th, 1975, PL 94-105 established WIC as a permanent program. Uh, the legislation stated Congress finds that substantial numbers of pregnant women, infants, and young children are at special risk in respect to their physical and mental health by reason of poor or inadequate nutrition or health care or both. So, but of course, all you get in that is like beans, milk, peanut butter. Formula, I think. Yeah, formula if it's babies. Um, but of course, they wouldn't use that yet, of yeah. course, when the baby comes. Um so yeah, seventy five. And if, I mean, are, are, at any point in time, are we going to be like it is nineteen eighty nine, or can it just be assumed that you know just by the fact that there's like what H A tracks and cassettes and no DVD, no no DVDs and CDs or whatever, you know? We, I think A tracks are pretty much dead by eighty nine. But okay, so, all right. So y'all fancy motherfuckers might have had no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but I, I know my, my dad had an 8-track player in the house and in his truck, and he, he used 8-tracks. Not that they were still coming out, but he used 8-tracks all the way up until, like, 92. Um, wow. So, yeah, he, he loved his 8-tracks. We couldn't get him to change over. It's almost like trying to get my mom to use a, a touchscreen cell phone. Uh, we couldn't get them to change over to those, respectively, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it took years um and from what my mom said it took years for him to go from records to eight tracks like he didn't even like start subscribing not subscribing but buying eight tracks until uh the uh until it just was a cheaper option than buying a record mm -hmm. um but anyways uh and i think his record player broke i'm not sure but uh, i know we had the eight track player and then eventually we got a combo which was an which was a record player and an eight track, uh, one of those big silver faced ones. I think that was after his mother died. He got ten thousand dollars, bought himself a new truck, didn't help pay off any of the credit card debt mom had racked up. Um, went out and bought that thing, and then two like two fucking like wood grain speakers that were taller than me at that point. But anyways, ah, uh, so. I was like that with CDs. I, I, it, it used to drive me crazy that my little brother would, when CDs start coming out and getting popular, I think it was like 91, 92, and my little brother would spend $18 on a CD, and I'd be like, dude, I can get two, almost two cassettes for the price that you're paying for one CD. So I continued with the cassettes, um, still buying them while he would spend 18 bucks on them, on the new, uh, you know, Smashing Pumpkins or Ellis and Chains or something, and I'd be like, "Dude, I can save so much more money and get more music." But he was right. <laughs> I re I remember um, people being so against uh, CDs because of the the quality was so good. Like it didn't, you know, and it was the same thing with like uh, records. You know, people were like, you know, it doesn't have the same feel, the same gritty texture as as a you know, even a, a cassette or a or a vinyl. Yeah. <clears> there <throat> was like big drama for that one. I don't know why, but it was. Um, there's something else I was going to say about C. Oh, yeah. Um, I actually am in the club. I never, because I was so broke between the time that, you know, CDs. I have never bought a brand new CD. The only CDs I've ever bought were from uh, a warehouse music. Um, mm. And that was the used ones because I just couldn't afford, like you were saying, you know, they're 18 fucking dollars. Yeah. But uh, sometimes, you know, you could get a relatively new CD at warehouse uh, that someone had traded in uh, for like, you know, less than 10 bucks. And then, of course, they had like the the small ones, uh, the, like the bins they would have and it'd be like 99 cents or uh, the best. The best part about warehouse was the buy two get two free. Uh, that they they ran that sale a lot, especially in my area, and I would go down there and just load up on on CDs. We also had a place in Troy, Alabama, for the longest time, and that's where we moved when we first moved from California. Um, it was a place called ABCDs, 
and it was another secondhand uh, place like warehouse, but it was a little mom and pop operation. And I would go in there and blow my entire paycheck when I was like 16, 17 years old. Um, I was working at Burger King as a crew member and my check would be like $120. I would blow that entire $120 on CDs only. I remember buying entire collections of like everything Nine Inch Nails had out at that time, everything Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, Cannibal Corpse, all that stuff. They had such a huge selection and they were cheap as hell. Um, and then you also had a punch card and for every five that you bought, you get one free. So, yeah, I would go in there and I would get, you know, 10 to 15 <laughs> CDs at a time. But I have never purchased a brand new CD ever, which is hilarious because I purchase all of my music now digitally. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't use the, the streaming services unless I already have the album and I don't have the album with me uh, or downloaded or whatever. And I don't have any signal. Then, you know, then I'll listen to the uh, I'll, I'll but anyways. But I, I will if I have a signal and I'm out, I will listen to that thing or whatever, you know, or let's say shells in the car. I don't have my phone. I can pull up Amazon music, whatever, but I still buy CDs. I still buy vinyl. Yeah. I not often because it's expensive, but there's a couple artists that their, their stuff. I, I specifically want on vinyl. Am I, I have, I must have at least 800, 900 records. Not as many CDs, but several hundred CDs as well. And, That's um, wild. Shell, Shell would get a kick out of seeing your collection. She loves shit like that. Her father had a massive uh, vinyl collection that uh, her mother has now. And she was Shell was hoping she was going to get it, but no one passed it down. So now uh, it, it just sits in the uh, my mother-in-law's closet collecting dust because she doesn't listen to them. I'm like, oh, the tragedy of it all. But anyway, <laughs> anyways, but uh, I got another, I got a good good friend who has like over 20,000 vinyl um Jeez. and uh yeah, he's very very well off but uh yeah and also he's got something like 10,000 physical books and a thousand of those are like uh not like they're not the gift editions of like cemetery dance stuff but the actual like lettered editions that cost like twelve hundred dollars he's got like a thousand of those dude's collection wow. is worth like a million bucks it's 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 insane but uh yeah she's always like we gotta we gotta see your your we gotta go visit your friend just so i can see she she loves shit like that i still buy cds i think the only cd i bought new was ozzy's latest album and i saw it at walmart and nabbed it i didn't even know he had a new album out i i bought that one too well it came out was it the end of last year or maybe earlier this year i <clears throat> i bought it Coolio. i think the last cd i bought uh brand new was Maybe last month I got Anthrax Among the Living, which I already owned on cassette, but I didn't have it on, on CD. We were just talking about it on a stream a couple nights ago. I asked anybody if they knew what Among the Living, what what yeah. they're talking about in it. You know, it's uh, the stand. Well, you know, you know this, but uh, they wrote a lot of. They've got at least four or five songs that have to do with uh, Stephen King books. Yeah, that's that's what I was telling everybody in chat. I was like, Anthrax are huge, huge fans of yeah. Stephen King because they've written numerous songs just based on his stuff. <clears throat> I wrote an article for Decibel Magazine uh, about songs that were written for uh, uh, based on horror books. And I think cool. Anthrax was one of the bands I used. I, I hope I hope you touched on Pet Cemetery by the Ramones. I still I have a a folk cover of, of that one that's really uh really interesting that I it's an arrangement I did myself on my acoustic. I don't know if I did or not. Uh, Google the. I, mean, the I don't wanna be buried. Pet cemetery. I've, had, I've thought about releasing it on the channel, but I worry about copyright stuff like that. So. Uh, I used. Uh, do you know what Probot is? I have it's uh, never Dave, heard of Dave Grohl's uh, kind of like hardcore project. I have no idea. Probot? Probot, yeah. It's, it's, it's basically Dave Grohl wrote a bunch of songs and um, like uh, from hardcore to like heavy metal and picked a bunch of singers and they all singed on. Sang, singed? Wow. They all <laughs> sang, I are a writer. They all sang yeah. on them. Um, 
I said botten the other day and my entire family just stopped everything they were doing and just stared at me for a second. It's like, did you just say botten? Like I, I had botten as <laughs> I don't yeah, write her. That's, a that's probot weird. song that uh, Kurt from DRI sing on, an accused song, Black Sabbath's Behind the Wall of Sleep, Misfits Hollywood Babylon. Shake uh, Your Blood featuring Lemmy? Oh, Chris, would my, my youngest would love that. He just got into Motorhead. He hit me with that in the car yesterday. He, he's like, uh, hand me the aux cable. So I hand him back the aux cable, and he puts on Ace of Spades. And I'm like, and he, before he starts playing, he goes, warning, these, this song will probably be stuck in your head all day and it just it starts playing I'm like what the fuck why are you listening to Motorhead I, I, I wasn't like saying he couldn't but it was just like where, where did that even come from and uh, he's a big fan of the Ramones so it popped up in his uh, recommended on Spotify and uh, he was he was like uh, do you know this one I was like yeah I know I fuck, fucking know this one I used to play this one in a band like I used to have spades like I used to get into character and everything for the fucking song but anyways um yeah he's 11 listening to Megadeth and Slayer he's basically me just did, uh, in a different body it's uh because I was listening to all those bands at about that age too <sighs> professional writers yes <laughs> God damn it, Jake. I'm going to put that one up on screen. <laughs> Botten is probably correct German grammar. Uh, I have a million cassettes I taped off Harvard and MIT's punk and pop radio shows, but I just listen to vinyl and songs on YouTube. That was a unique scenario I was trying to describe. Why the only reason, and I, I didn't, I don't think I got to my point well enough. And it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. But uh, there was something I was going to bring up that I, I still listen to streaming. I can't remember the unique situation I was in where I had to listen to streaming instead of my downloaded music. I can't remember what the hell it was. So, anyways. My damn ADHD brain gets stuck on stupid shit like that. Oh, I need to move this down to later scene. And if you want, we can let's see highlight these different colors or something. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Well, that's not that's not easy on the eyes. That is. I was about to say that. Ooh. Loves me some purple, but yeah, that's hard to read. Yeah. Also, if you're back to writing, you're still on the infinity screen. Okay. So, you know. <clears throat> yeah, you, you did write convenience store. I kind of chuckled inwardly. I might have even chuckled outwardly when I read it. Um, but that was just because I've yeah. done the same thing. I've done convenience store. I read uh, one of uh, Jake's stories on stream for game night. And, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, it said convenience store. And I, I just I chuckle because I do that quite often. Also, speech to text does that to me all the time because I don't know how to spell convenience. Uh, I get it wrong every single time. That's another so reason I. why I use the speech to text. So um, I get and, sheriff wrong every time. Really? Yes. That's, a, that's an interesting one. I've never had a problem with that one. Um also, for some odd reason, and this is driving me absolutely batshit fucking crazy, as a, as a writer and someone that I believe is at least of moderate intelligence, myself, suddenly I've started saying supposedly. And I'm like, just fucking stop it. Just stop. So next, you're going to be saying irregardless, even though that shit is in the dictionary <laughs> now. That's ridiculous. <sighs> Yeah, Sheriff, I'm like, two R's and two F's, or just two R's and one F, or is it one R, two F's? Sheriff. <laughs> Sheriff. JB starts the story at the laundromat. What? I like to give my favorite views, since they literally have songs that have been posted for 15 years and have 2,000 views. If I'm typing really fast... 
then I'll do that a lot where I misspell things or use similar words that aren't the one I'm meaning to write. Yeah, we, we all do it, man. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Not saying you're embarrassed, but it's we, we all do it. Um, and think about this. One of the most famous typos of all time, and this these books sold millions, is in the original Twilight. Stephanie Meyer wrote a moat of dust, but she used the wrong moat and it was like a castle moat. And when I read that, I was just tackling and I was like, that's a lot of fucking dust. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, and I stopped reading after that because I was like, if her editor didn't catch that, uh, if that one got through, I do not have hopes for the, any, any of the other books in this series. I gave the first book a hundred pages and uh... Uh, you're, you're a, you're a good, good man. I think it's just the most cliche thing that yeah. I ever read. It's just, it's the most boring. It's like V.C. Andrews writing. I still remember the time Stephen King was high as a kite and he was doing an interview on television and he had Peter Straub sitting right next to him and they were talking about the best and worst writers of, of, of that. It was like the late 80s, maybe early. No, it was definitely the 80s. Didn't um, they have another? That, is that the one with Ira Levin? In I, I think so, but what King says has always stuck with me. And someone asked him about V.C. Andrews, and he says V.C. Andrews is currently writing the worst prose in literature. <laughs> and I'm just like, he's, and you can tell he's coked uh, out of his mind. He, he's like, his eyes are even twitching to kind of like the dude in uh, Identity. You know, it's, it's just like, it's hmm. just wiling out, and Straub is sitting over there like, like this. <laughs> When your friend's high and you're not, he's just <laughs> like, why are we talking shit about our fellow writers? Just move on. But yeah, sure there's, a, there's a really cool interview. I don't remember if King is on it, but it's Ira Levin, Peter Straub, and somebody else. And they're all just smoking cigarettes like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And during this interview, they're both they're they're both smoking, too. Um, but there was a there was a third author. I don't think I've ever seen Ira Levin, so it might have been him. Um, but I just I remember, I remember that uh, that quote so much. V.C. Andrews is writing the worst prose in literature currently. I've never the worst I've prose. never read uh, V.C. Andrews, but I did just recently get uh, Flowers in the Attic. Gotcha. It's it's basic stuff. It's the she well it's now Andrew Niederman took over when she died, but. Uh, she originally, I mean, it was, you know what people were there for when they bought her books. It was not there for a high literary experience. So, I mean, she she did what people wanted. Uh, uh, e, I mailed your care package off this morning. Estimated to get there on Friday. Fucking rad. Thank you, Zoop. Appreciate you. Yeah, Jacob, that that's uh, probably the one. I know, I know it's like in the late 70s. Oh, this was the, the what I'm what I'm then that's definitely not what I'm talking about. Cool that you you know which one it was, but uh the one that I'm talking about, they're they're at a book signing and there's a table oh. there's like a card table and Straub's sitting there, he's got on like a blue shirt. King has on this brown blazer and his thick uh black rimmed glasses. Uh and he, he says that and you can just tell he is just fucking geeked out of his mind on something. Mm. <clears throat> Oh yeah, did I finish what you wrote? Yeah, I did. Okay. Also, let me go up here and do. Add sounds. Chapter heading. Yeah, Jake. I've seen I've seen that typo in Pet Cemetery. I've made note of it in one of my copies too, because they they still haven't they still haven't fixed it. Like I have this uh, the new trade paperback or mass market paperback edition, and it's still in there.
Cassidy is now missing both his canines. Like they fell out. <laughs> I added that to his description up here. Okay. I did the I did the um, shaved head because uh, it's like the lazy haircut. Yeah, definitely. 100%. I, I like that. I thought he'd be a, uh, it'd make him even more endearing to have, you know, his, his wide, mile wide grin uh, showing off the uh, black spaces where his recently lost cleaning lines used to be. It's even more, uh, even more endearing. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Lots of books have someone being given free reign. What do you mean, Lazy? Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, there was one. Uh, I read an entire book where every time, and it came up oddly often, uh, instead of taught, as in you taught someone, uh, the author wrote T-A-U-T every single time. <clears throat> like it's a taught situation. Or the rope was taught. I was like, bruh, come on, that's simple. Can't see. My neck, the back. I need a backyotomy. I want 150,000.
Uh, you think we got too many people living in this house? I was thinking uh, to fix that situation, they could have like a storage shed, like duct taped onto the back, <laughs> like you know something, some kind of thing. Uh, I I like the idea. Uh, hey, vamp, how you doing? I ain't seen you in a while. Um, I like the idea of having that many people in there. It might be a bit crowded, like writing wise, but I do I do like the idea of all those people being stuck in this one cramped place and everybody's just desperate you know for a better life mm -hmm. uh but uh i mean yeah do what you want man if you want to kill somebody i just mean I'll, like care like, like character wise like being able yeah, to I, I know what you're getting yeah being able to give because if, if we took out one of the guys um because i'm trying to you know i, I want them to all like have personality but i also don't want people to get confused like right. uncle, uncle, uncle's son. Yeah, I was I was thinking of um, if we got rid of anyone, when you just brought this up, the first person I thought we can get rid of is the other uncle um, and just have his kids, no, his 24-year-old son and his pregnant wife living yeah. with them, you know, and that, that could easily get, because I don't see that character in my head at all. I see Travis, I see Rita, I see Bethany, yeah. I see, uh, I already forgot the uh, the son's name. Uh, Hunter, um, Hunter. I see Cassidy. I see Shane. Yeah, it would be the it would be the other one. Is it more than ten? No, I don't think so. So we got Rita, Bethany, Hunter, Cassidy, Shane, and Travis is six. Am I missing someone? If we get rid of the other uncle? Uh, no, Shane, Aunt Rita, Uncle Travis, Hunter, Bethany, and Cassidy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Dewitt might be too much. Yeah, but I don't. I don't see him anyways. So I was in, interested in seeing what you were going to do with him, or if I if I was going to take it on. Did the Bradys and Full House have too many people? It's a little easier to keep track of people when it's a television show. Yeah, when visually you could see you got faces. Yeah, so we got to have the uh, Full House had too many when it became Fuller House. You know, we're probably going to be, you know, like the uh, the carnival. Not that we're going to describe every single person, but that's probably going to be a, a nice handful of, yeah, characters. I mean, we only have three now or four: the Ferris wheel guy, boobs, whoever boobs is, and uh, Shenna, Shingo, and Shenna. My wife asked me today, she goes, you got a, you got a name for the, the girl at the carnival yet? I said, yeah, Shanna. She goes, Shanna? I said, Shanna, yeah, as in Hannah, but with an S yeah. in front of it. She said, what? Is, I said, don't ask. Never heard <laughs> just, that name before. It's just a word. Uh, we are writing a basically like a coming of age, 16-year-old boy living uh, Harry Potter style with his aunt and uncle and... A bunch of other people in this either trailer park or rundown house whatever um and the uncle is stealing is going to be stealing a bag of cocaine then the main character shane who's 16 steals the cocaine from his uncle and runs off with the carnival and meets a girl you know that that's pretty much the build up and then it's the carnival is going to be on the road so it's going to be a kind of like very laxed cat and mouse chase until shit goes down later on and they'll become more tense so on and so forth. Uh, but that's the gist of what we're doing. But yay for Carnival Story. I could write, I could only write Carnival Stories and be happy the rest of my career. Carnival, Circus, Amusement Park, Boardwalk, any of that shit. <sighs> Is that guy's name? Ooh, there was literally a child nutrition and WIC reauthorization act of nineteen eighty nine. 
So that hmm. year they changed things. This definitely isn't a YA. No, this is no. Uh, we're going to get dark. I promise you. Not that YA doesn't get dark, but yeah, it's definitely not YA. They could get government cheese too. They didn't stop Dude, doing I'll that tell you in what, the nineties. If the government ever gave free food, it was freaking awesome. It was that cheese. <laughs> that uh that stuff was like was like cocaine in and of itself. That shit yeah. was, uh, we use that for everything. Loved that cheese. The plain rectangle box. It's a big brick of cheese. In Lansdale's freezer burn, the uh, the the main attraction, like the the uh, the anchor of his whole the whole sideshow, because they have a freak show and stuff, is this uh, uh, block of ice that has a, a prehistoric man in it that he lugs around everywhere. <laughs> that's that's funny. It is. It's like his pride and joy. And he does everything just to keep that thing frozen. And you're never really sure if it's a if it is if it's a really prehistoric guy or just a dead guy in there. That's cool. I like that. <clears throat> okay, Jake. Yeah, sounds good.
I'm going to change this uh, baby fill to her mountainous pregnant belly. What do you think? Okay. Cool with that? I don't know. Baby fill's bothering me for some fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do planetary, but that's a little too alliter alliterative for that sentence. Because it would be her uh, planetary pregnant belly reaching the porch first. That's a lot of peas. <laughs> Anyways, the arms to bring. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a great spot of humor. <laughs> it comes out of nowhere. I love this kid. What is this chick's name? I keep forgetting this chick's name. Oh, yeah. Rita or Bethany. <laughs>
Ooh, I like that. The soot, soot covered screen turning his skin an eerie black. Where did it all go? I deleted it on accident. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the way to go. I brought it, yeah. I brought it back. <clears throat> Yay, it's back. What a wreck. I move that later piece up to this discussion here. Gotcha. Yeah, and feel free to to toss in uh, to help differentiate all the characters' uh, descriptive things yeah. here and there. Whatever. Um, I've been layering some as as they kind of grow in my head. I also don't want to do too much right now because I don't want to break your momentum while you're writing and I don't mm -hmm. want to change anything new while you're still in that area. Uh, let's see here. I'm not sure I'm going. All right, I got to get some lunch. I'm either going to stop here or I can um, hit my camera and hang out and eat. But no, I think I think we're good. We've been going for two hours. Um, we can always do more later, or I mean, it's whatever you really want to do. I'm fine the rest of the day. So if you just want to take a break and come back and do another episode, or if you want to eat on camera, I don't really have anything else to add right now. Um, I'm still formulating. Uh, I'm, well, I, I have been adding, and I think I've added a considerable amount, actually. Uh, but yeah, the later scene down here, I got several paragraphs already done. Um, so we put it, we put in work today. That's that's for sure, and it's yeah, going we, <coughs> wonderfully. Um, and if I if I were to do anything else today, I would probably just be layering what you already have uh, with like character descriptions and whatnot. Um, I also want to try and fit in. Where the, where the most natural place for this wick discussion is um just to throw it in there that they do have money for something but maybe they're out of vouchers because there is there's six fucking people living off one person's wick so <laughs> well, they could use their, they'd be using their their uh food stamps to buy gum so that they get the 75 cents back for each dollar i don't know if you ever did that before but no i didn't Oh yeah, because you you can't you know you obviously can't buy cigarettes and stuff with uh, right food stamps, so you buy a pack to, pack of big red, and then you just you have Brandy. another friend buy a pack of big red, another friend really? buy a, yeah you used to do that. I didn't know time. you could do that. I'm no wonder they switched over to the EBT cards. Um, but uh, yeah, this was back do, when you had booklets of like the paper. The right, right, the stuff. actual food stamps. Yeah. Um, and now it's the EBT card. But uh, I would, I don't think E has drink drink a thing yes i have i got my copy i've been drinking anyways um hang on uh <laughs> i'm getting distracted by chat uh we used to sell our food stamps like a 50 cents on a dollar kind of thing so mm -hmm. if we had a hundred we would make 50 bucks that, that kind of thing um but that's the only thing i've really really ever did as far as that was concerned um but yeah, we were on all that government assistance when I was growing up. And uh, it was funny because I kind of, you were talking about how it was a, um, a cushion for you to, you know, just be lazy. Yeah. Uh, when I needed it, I couldn't fucking get it. That was the, that was the crazy part is like, you, you know, you're, you're working, you should be able to pay for this, that, and the other. I was like, now I'm literally homeless working. All my money is going to trying to find a place to live or it's going to food how am I supposed to find a place to live when I'm only making, you know, I think it was like five twenty-five an hour back then. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, it was, it was a mess. Uh, uh, but yeah, I used to, when, when I was younger, mom would literally have me go sell the food stamps to, to, I didn't even know you could do that. I didn't think they gave you cash back at all. I thought it was a matter of, you know, you just had to lose that money or get, you know, over that amount. I didn't know they gave you your cash back. Um, maybe my mom do that, but I didn't, but yeah, she would send me over to neighbors and it's like, go trade this in. They know how much to pay. <laughs> so, and that's why we were stuck eating what we ate, which was basically 
the bare, bare minimum. Um, we didn't have milk for like four years because uh, we couldn't afford it. And that was back when milk was like a, you know, like it wasn't any more than a dollar fifty. Uh, mm. And we had a drive through dairy in our uh, in our neighborhood. And that place was even more expensive, but it was the closest place. So dad would go down to get that because he was lazy. He didn't want to get out of his truck. And you pull up and tell the people, I don't know if you've ever done a drive through uh, dairy, but you literally pull up and it's like a convenience store, but you drive up, tell the person what you want, and then they grab everything and you pay for it. So, um, yeah, there's, those a are party, pretty- there's a party store around here like that, but not, yeah. not like specifically dairy. Gotcha. They, they literally called them dairy drive up dairies when, mm-hmm. but there was more stuff there. There was candy bars, you know, other groceries and whatnot, but you didn't have to get out of the car. Uh, you just pull up, tell the person behind where the, it was usually like a small brick building and it was just an open face uh, convenience store. And then the corrugated metal uh, door, the garage door basically would, would never be all the way up. There'd always yeah. be this, this line of that uh, anyways, but yeah, uh, good, amazing work today. Um, Looking forward to convenient convenient store milk. Yes, convenient milk store. Yes, yes, not convenience store. Can a convenient milk store? Yes, <laughs> but they had other things other than dairies. But that's what we called them was a drive up dairy. Um, just like it took me a long time when I first moved out here to stop calling every gas station I went to a liquor store because out in California, the liquor the the gas stations had liquor, you know, out here yeah. they don't, I don't know what it's like up in Michigan, but, um, the we, here, well, I remember when I, 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 I lived in Denver for a little while in the eighties. And when I remember moving out there and anytime I would say party store, they're like, what the heck are you talking about? Like we get balloons and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> what? No, where you go to party, man, you get your party supplies. You, your you know, you get you They're like, you mean a liquor store. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Liquor store. Yeah. Out here, a liquor store is like the ABC store or whatever. Um, that's uh, that's what they call a liquor store out here because you can't sell hard liquor, uh, anything over a certain ABV. You can't sell uh, at the at a convenience store or grocery store here. Um, and then some some counties are dry Sundays. Uh, mine just switched like two years ago to where you can actually buy alcohol on a Sunday. Um, and the only place you could get it before that was like shorter where they have the, uh, the, the native American racetrack and casino and all that stuff, because it's their land. You can do whatever they can do, whatever they want. Um, and shorter didn't sell like, uh, beer cans or anything like that to charge as much as possible. They would literally run a keg into old milk cartons, uh, sanitized and whatnot, but you'd get a, you get an entire gallon of beer, uh, is that was the only, and then there was at one point in time, draft beer was illegal here. Uh, you could only do the bottles or stuff, stuff like that. I don't even know why any of these rules existed. But uh, yeah, so Shorter was the only place you could get draft beer. And it was the only place you could get beer on Sundays. Uh, so yeah, I spent a lot of time in Shorter uh, when I was younger. That's for that's for damn sure. Anyways, ugh, um, I don't know where I'm going to fit in all the stuff that I wrote. But cause, it's good to have it there. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I put in I put in here that uh, uh, that Travis is in a good mood on this day, and I'm thinking it's because he got he he got the cocaine, so he's in a better mood, and he's you know this is right after he's he's accomplished the thieving of it, so maybe he hasn't told everybody yet. Uh, I said he's in a good mood today, and I don't want to ruin it. Anyways, so yeah, uh, thank you guys for joining us. I'm going to head inside and then I'm going to shoot a bunch of videos. Sorry, there was no pre recorded video today, but I figured if there's still a video today, so <laughs> it's whatever. Uh, but the, you got a review for this book coming tomorrow. So you can look forward to that. Um, do you want, no, uh, we're not streaming tomorrow morning because I have a doctor's appointment. Do you want to do something later in the day or do you just want to call it quits until? I, <clears throat> I would, but I got Final Guys tonight and I haven't watched the main feature yet. Mm-hmm. So um, I probably I probably shouldn't. Yeah, let, let's let's just quit off for tomorrow um, and 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 tonight, and we'll do Thursday. We'll get back on it Thursday morning, nine o'clock. Is that cool? Yeah. Or ten o'clock for you? Yeah. Ten o'clock. Yeah. All right. So we'll see you guys on Thursday. Thanks again for watching. But until next time, all hail the cheese.